Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is our .NET Framework custom code extensibility and providing some strategies on how you can troubleshoot your custom code. Let's go. All right, so we've recently announced a public preview of .NET Framework custom code for Azure Logic App Standard. I will include a link to that video in the description if you haven't seen it. I would suggest you go check out that one first because you're going to get the full experience. The purpose of this video is we want to talk more about how you can troubleshoot your custom code and give you some strategies along the way. Now, just wanted to call this out early. I will be talking about application insights. Uh, the version I'm using is V2. I'll include a link to that video as well. And this is something that actually is quite helpful in my opinion. So if you're not using it, it is worth enabling because I feel like it's, it's going to help you out. So let's go ahead. Let's get more into more details and see what we got. Okay, so let's talk about some strategies that you can use when trying to figure out what issues might occur with custom code. So naturally, number one is, is local debugging. And uh, we've, we've talked about this before in the demos. So if you haven't seen this run live, uh, you know, feel free to check out the original video announcing the public preview, which will be in the description of this particular video, but this is going to give you the most fidelity. And uh, I've just sort of put some numbers here just to help illustrate how you would set this up. You're in VS Code, you've got a working solution, you're ready to do some debugging. You come, you click on this uh, debug icon here in the left panel. And then what you want to do is you want to start with Logic App, right? So you'd select the drop down, select Logic App then hit the play button. That will take, you know, 10, 20 seconds to sort of light up and you'll see basically the runtime now spinning and uh, they'll be good from that perspective. But if we want the custom code, we need to also, after we've got Logic Apps debugger running, is select attached to .NET functions. So that's step number uh, five and, or sorry, step number four. <laughs> And then you go ahead and hit the play button. And then once again, once you've got that, and you can do this step before, but set a breakpoint. Just uh, before you actually execute anything, you obviously want to make sure you set a breakpoint in your custom code. And then you can use the you know, VS Code facilities to step into, step out of uh, you know, the F5. And you'll also see like the locals and sort of the watch type uh, capability show up here in the left um, uh, pane. So that's how you're going to get the most fidelity with uh, local debugging. But the question does come up, okay, once I deploy my code, now what do I do? And so in Azure, like at least at this point, there's no way to attach, say, a local VS Code instance to a running instance in Azure, right? So we, we don't have that, at least not at this point in time. Remember, we're public preview here. And so here's some strategies that I'm going to suggest that you can use to sort of help in this scenario. So obviously we've got run history that continues to work. Now you're going to see a very high level error message here. That's somewhat deliberate. It, it's kind of like calling an API. Like if you go ahead and call an API, you're not going to get a ton of verbose messages back because there could be sensitive information returned and that introduces sort of security issues. So, you know, aligned with those principles, you're not going to see a ton of info here. But, but there is sort of other options here. And the sort of initial option or sort of the best option is application insights can help us. Now, what you're going to see here in my screenshots and in the demo is really uh, application insights v2, which is in public preview. This should work in, in V1, I would imagine. This should still light up very similarly, but in case you're wondering, in case there's differences, uh, this is V2. Now, we do have the exceptions table, and we will have additional information logged. And where you're going to want to look is in the innermost message column, right? So that is where you're going to see some more details. And so this is an example of what I pulled out of that innermost details column. And it's actually quite helpful in my mind, right? So the, the demo I'm going to show you, I inject my own exception. I just throw a new exception. This is my exception, right? We can see that being listed right here, 
right? System dot exception, this is my exception. And then probably even more importantly, right? We can see the exact line where the issue occurred, right? Weather forecast.cs, weather forecast.cs, line 32. And sure enough, that is line 32. So I feel like this is, you know, going to help you um, be able to then sort of figure out what's going on. Now, in addition to this, I just talked about run history, right? So let's go back a couple slides. We can see the inputs, right? Here's the zip code, here's the temperature scale. So what this allows us to do is sort of use a hybrid of the two models and capture those inputs and then run in the local debugger and pass in the same values that were used during the exception. And that should allow you to then step through line by line and figure out where exactly your code is failing and why. So yeah, there's a, we're definitely open for suggestions in terms of how we can make this easier. But I think in the sort of interim, that is a strategy that you can employ. Now here, what we're going to do is just run a demo, just ignore this screen. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just uh, show a demo here. Okay, so what I've got here is I've deployed my custom code project uh, up to Azure. If we head over to assemblies, uh, we should see all of the assemblies related to our project. And sure enough, we've got our assemblies. Now the, the custom code that we've written is this weather forecast.dll. So that's right here. These are all just prerequisites um, that sort of are, are needed. Now, if we head over to our workflows, I've just got a, a single workflow here, my workflow. Show, go to the designer just so you can see that. So here we're gonna call local function, uh, weather forecast, here's our, our properties. So we can go and just run this. Uh, I don't need a, a trigger or a, a external sort of call to make this work. So let's just go ahead and run that. Let's refresh. Okay, here it is, we've got a failure. So we're gonna see much like we saw in the screenshot that there's just kind of this generic error here. You know please verify the function code is valid. And so here, you know, we can see the inputs. Now what I have set up here is uh, application insights is configured and I'll link to that video as well that talks about how you go ahead and enable V2 of this. And we can go ahead and click on application insights and then we can go ahead and click on logs. Uh, we can just close this down for now. And then we can just type exceptions. And then I'm just going to sort by timestamp descending. And here we can just re like uh, reduce our filter to 30 minutes and just go ahead and click run. Now, it does take, in my experience, like well, probably two to three minutes for events to show up in App Insight. So I'm going to pause the recording and we'll come back in just a couple minutes. Okay, let's try this again. And we can see we've got two sort of events that have been logged here. So let's go ahead and let's just take a look at one of them. And here we've got that innermost message that I talked about. And then we've got sort of similar to what you saw in the screenshot, right? We've got the exception, System.exception, this is my exception. And then we also have uh, the line 32. So that uh, is, is kind of what I was, you know, after I think this is probably just very similar uh, in terms of the exception being logged. It is for the, the same instance. So that's where you can get some more details, some more insights. Another thing just worth showing as well is let's just go to the request table. And we won't see this level of fidelity, but we'll certainly see that the exception did occur, right? So what we've got here is this represents our trigger, right? Because we can see when an HTTP request is received, trigger invocation, that's cool. Then what we've got is our weather forecast. So this is our custom code, right? That's the name of the function. And we can see we've got a success flag of false, meaning we do have an error. And uh, so that's important, right? Result code is zero, success is false. So this is where we know we've got an issue. Uh, we won't see necessarily like that fidelity that we see in the exception itself, 
but this is where we do know we've got issues, right? So if you, you know, we're basically looking for sort of errors and then what you could do is, is then be able to use this particular um, instance or ID to then figure out the exception, like what's going on in the exception table. So this uh, should help. And uh, yeah, we're open to feedback, as I mentioned before, if there's sort of other experiences that you'd like to see uh, in terms of being able to debug or get more insights into the performance of your code.